Hi everybody, I'm gonna walk with Snickers here. And I'll just preface this all that he may see a dog and freak out. He's pulling a lot. So we'll just see, this may be a disaster, but nonetheless, I wanted to read to you, and of course there's wind, so I have this little wind thingy on the microphone. Hopefully this will work, but if it doesn't, pour me culpa, pour me culpa, pour me maxima culpa, there we are. So. I want to read to you a scripture, 1 John chapter 3, 2. And the reason I want to read this is I cannot tell you in my own life and also in ministry how often the reality and truth of this scripture uh, is lost in our hearts. In other words, we don't believe it. Uh, because of things that have happened to us, uh, because of what people have told us, because of our failures, Here's the reading. See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. And I can stop right there. I mean, we're loved by God. God has created us. He wants to be with us. He loves us. And he loves our dogs, even if they're doing doodles on the sidewalk there. Come on, Snickers. How many of us and I include myself. I've had moments in your life and my life where we felt inadequate or not loved or we failed in some way. And we equate that to who we are. And it's not someone that's loved or lovable or could be loved. This is a problem. Again, we are children of God. We hear this from this in the scriptures. Let me continue. And, and yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. We can that's pretty obvious in our culture that God is not recognized. Right? It doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. Beloved, we are God's children now. Again now it's said again. We are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. Because we're all broken. I'm broken. But loved. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. A lot of pit stops, by the way, here. Because Snickers is sniffing everything that can be sniffed. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. In other words, what we are loved, is beloved by God, broken, loved, and we haven't come to the full stature of who we can be. Snickers is still doing some more smelling here. Come on, buddy, let's go. I said this is be an adventure, trying to walk the dog and do a, a Friday video. We do know that when it, when it is revealed, we shall be like him. We'll be like God. We won't be gods and we won't be a deity. But remember, we've been made in the likeness and image of God. I spoke about this on All Saints Day. We do know that when, he is when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, we can only see God partially and know God partially because of our brokenness. But also because God is so great. It has been said in the scriptures that no one can see God and live. But this is the amazing thing is that we can see God in the person of Jesus. And that's kind of the scandal for some is that God is almighty. How could we possibly see him? How could we be with him when he is so great and we're so small? Like that's the good news, my friends. That's great news. But it's scandalous and it's hard to believe. Because we don't believe it it's ourselves. We don't believe that we are beloved or are loved or can love and be loved. For we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. Okay, so we are called then to have hope. Not in ourselves, not in our works, though sometimes we do good things, sometimes we do bad things. 
But everyone who has hope based on him, where is your hope? It's not in presidents or people in Congress. It's not in me, your pastor. It's not in our parents, our friends. Though all of these people can help us and also let us down. But it's him. For him, through him, and with him. And the unity of the Holy Spirit. We hear, we hear these words at Mass, but it's so important that we recognize that you and I are beloved by God. A simple message I want to share with you, one that needs to go deep into our hearts, mine included, because I've had times, like just today, I was thinking about, I made a phone call to somebody. They wanted me to call them, and I, I dialed the number, messed it up, didn't go through, dialed it again, finally went through, and I, all I could do is leave a message. And that's not the bad part. The crazy part was then, I wanted to leave the number where they can call me at church here. And I would have a piece of paper in my drawer that had the number, because I don't, <laughs> how many of us remember even our own phone number, right? So I don't remember the church's number, but I pulled it out, I thought, the, uh, the number for the church, but it's actually the number for the school. So I started reading it off in the message, and I'm like, wait a second, this isn't, this isn't the number for the church, it's the number for the parish, or for the school. So, there you have it. I'm like, ah, oh, so I have to find another document. I can't find the original paper in my drawer. I had to go to my, on my phone and look around, feeling like an idiot. Here I am, the pastor. I don't even know the phone number of the church I work at for a year and four months. And I had a little pity party, like, I just stink. You know, there's horrible words we say to ourselves. I just suck at this. Or, or come on, anybody with any reasonable mind can know this. Why don't you memorize this? And believe it or not, it's actually, mm, I would say just a couple months ago that I actually could remember the address of our parish office. Yes. Because I've never needed to. I'll look it up and copy and paste or, yeah. So uh, let's see here. What would that be? The address would be, let's see. Right? Oh, can't, can't even see it. The, the poles in front. Let me make it obvious here. So I walk by this every day. So I'm walking into the office here. But I walk by that number every day, 13715, and I somehow miss it. And I don't remember it. And then I go, oh. And when I disappoint people, then I go through that route. So I was like, oh man, what kind of priest am I? And again, I just call it a pity party. And we're all prone to this. And I gotta be careful. We all need to be careful with these things because we can also start believing lies about ourselves. I mean, I'm beloved by God. I'm broken. I have talents. I have gifts, but I also have screw-ups and failings. I'm a sinner. And yet, and this is the hard part, and yet God loves me. And I know that. In fact, I'm right now in front of the, the day chapel here. And through those doors, right there, that door right there, is the one who matters the most, Jesus, in the Blessed Sacrament, who tells me he loves me. He tells all of us, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. I will give you rest. Think of all the anxieties in our lives, right? We all have them. But I really believe this. When I believe truly my heart that God loves me, this truth of the scriptures that I'm his child, that I am so much more patient, I'm so much more willing, I am more humble, I'm not defensive, I'm willing to ask for forgiveness. Um, we've all made mistakes. And the question is then what do we do with them? I was mentioning, was it not too long ago, that, that in order to be humble, I think this was today. See, I can't even remember basically what I was talking about today at Mass, but if you want to be humble, be prepared to be humiliated. Who wants to do that, right? 
I guess I get the bonus of being humiliated in front of hundreds of people at once. <laughs> so when I was first a priest, I'd make mistakes at Mass. I would get so upset quietly and inwardly. I know some priests that have been traumatized in that regard. They don't know what to do with that. Um, but I got to remember, am I the sum of my mess ups? Am, is my goof ups, my, even my sin, the sum of who I am? Not at all. So I want to close with a scripture. Once again, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based in on him makes himself pure as he is pure. Folks, I'll see you this weekend. Deacon Brett is back and he'll be offering the homily. And uh, Father Anthony and myself will be trading off doing the masses. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless. Bye-bye.